Welcome back, guys, and welcome to another episode of Connecticut Angler. So, what are we going to be doing today? Well, we are in early November now. It's, we're actually almost getting to mid-November at this point. And uh, unfortunately for me, I blew the rear diff of my truck like just about a month ago. And it has been in the shop ever since, uh, thanks to both supply chain issues and labor shortage issues. It is what it is. Hopefully I'm gonna be getting it back in the next couple days. But that has sidelined me for a lot of the autumn stocker stream fishing that, that has been really hot lately, right? They started stocking, I wanna say 30 or 40 days ago. And I've seen a lot of you guys out there getting a lot of awesome stocker fish. I, I know there's, there's some of my viewers that just really don't like fishing for stockfish. I love fishing for wild fish. You see me do it all the time in the channel. I think it's awesome and I appreciate it for how special it is. But I also really enjoy getting into some stocker fish. To me, that's still fun too. And I know a lot of you guys agree. And for a lot of you guys, going and fishing for stocker, stocker trout is a little bit more relatable and I, and I totally get that. So, I have gotten out here to the Pequabic River and we're going to go for some stockers today. What's kind of neat about this episode is, I think it was around this time last year, I came to this exact same stretch of this river and I was throwing spinners, barbless single hook spinners to catch these stocked trout. It was kind of an experiment because up to that point I had never caught a trout on a spinner before. During that during the, that whole outing, I was kind of discussing what I thought the differences would be between throwing spinners and if I was instead using a fly rod and could throw nymphs and stuff like that. So I thought it would be neat to come back out roughly a year after filming that episode with the fly rod and see how my results are different. Now, this isn't going to be a one-to-one -one comparison, of course. You know, every year, what these stockers do when they dump them in is going to be very dependent upon water temperature, the flows, conditions in general, where they put the fish might change a little bit, how many fish they put in might change a little bit, the mixture of species they put in might change a little bit. There's a lot that can be different. Exactly how far I am past the stocking could also uh, change what kind of success um, we can expect out here. I think we're about 20 days since they stocked the stream, so the fish have had a little bit of time to acclimate, to move around in the stream. It'll be interesting to see what we can get into. My goal, I think, today is gonna be mostly to try nymphing, but if we're really not getting anything with that approach, then I have no problem switching over to streamers. But anyway, I've done enough talking. Let's hit the stream and see what we can find out here on the Pequabic. There's a neat looking little pool up here. Now, you'll remember last year, I, I believe last year I tried this spot first, didn't come up with anything. So it's gonna be interesting to see if I can find anything this year in this pool. What am I using here today? We've got the five weight. Uh, like I said, I'm gonna be nymphing for the most part, unless nymphing proves to be really not working at all. My plan is to mostly be nymphing. I'm starting off with uh, the classic, good old pheasant tail. See how that goes. This water is a little deeper than I thought it was. I think I'm gonna drop the nymph down just a tad bit more. I think I'm running this about three feet now. All right, no luck on the nymphs in this pool. I spent about 10 minutes here. I'm not gonna spend any more time. Yeah, one more cast here, and we're gonna move on. Oh, got one. Well, good thing I didn't move on uh, one cast earlier, huh? <laughs> Ooh, okay, nice rainbow. Nice rainbow. All right. All right, not bad. Not a bad start to the morning here, guys. But he's not in the net yet. Let's get him in here. Get him upstream with me here. All right, there we go, guys. Not bad at all. <laughs> my uh, my tippet broke the moment I got him in the net. 
I'm lucky to even have even landed this fish. You can see he's still got the nymph there in his mouth. My tippet broken off. I'll pop that right out. Get my nymph tied back on. Maybe I'll just replace all the uh, the lower section of tippet. But in the meantime, let's let this guy go. All right, guys. Well, hell of a way to start off the outing. Got our first rainbow out of our very first pool with with literally the last cast before I was ready to move on to another spot. You know, it can go that way sometimes. You know, you're always trying to strike a balance when you're out in the river. You don't want to stay too long in a spot that may very well be unproductive. Um, at the same time, you know, just because you've made, you know, 20, 25 casts uh, and 25 drifts through a spot doesn't necessarily mean that any fish that are there would have bitten yet. So, you know, it's, it's always a compromise you're trying to strike. In this particular case, I'm glad that I decided to make that final cast. Um, now that we've gotten one fish out of here, um, I think we should make a couple more casts just in case. Now, I've actually switched over to a Rainbow Warrior Nymph, which is a little bit flashier than the pheasant tail, because again, this, this water is a little bit cloudy, and um, I don't know, I, part of me is thinking, well, maybe it was a little tough for them to, uh, to see the pheasant tail coming down the current. Let's go with super flashy and see if we get any reactions with that. Okay guys, so last year during that episode, this was where I got my first, my first fish. Let's see what we can do here this time. Now I do think this, first of all, the spot is moving uh, faster than it was last year for sure. And second, I'm using a much different offering this time, right? I'm using a nymph. It's not going to get down nearly as quickly as those spinners did. Might have to tweak my uh, nymph depth a little bit. We'll see how it goes here. Okay, let's try out this spot. You know, it kind of dawns on me just now <laughs> as I'm looking down at the water that the sun is positioned terribly for just the exact orientation um, of the road and my vantage point against the river. It's just casting a shadow directly into the water wherever I'm looking. I'm gonna have to really watch out for that. Oh my god, guys, I literally just dropped my nymph in the water to get ready to cast and I hooked a fish. I mean, literally like three feet in front of me, I hooked a fish. Incredible. Incredible. I cannot believe that just happened. You have to have seen that in the video. Oh good, I'm recording. But this fish is like refusing to come up. Oh, it's a nice size one. Nice. All right. What a ridiculous catch. Well, this fish just, just doesn't want to give up. He wants a little bit of a fight, but I, you know, I didn't have to reel him in. He was already, he was already damn near at my feet. Less, less than a rod length away. <laughs> crazy. Just crazy. Got him. Oh, is this a tiger? It's a tiger. Cool. <laughs> nice. Decent sized stalker tiger. Pretty cool, guys. Pretty damn cool. This guy's uh, this guy's pretty good size. He's gotta go like 16 or so. Not a lot of modeling on this tiger. The least modeling and the least wormy pattern I've ever seen in a tiger. Let's see, he took that rainbow warrior. Nice and flashy. All right, guys, that, that was pretty cool. <laughs> Literally just dropped my nymph down in front of me to get ready to cast less than a rod length away and that nice 16 inch or so tiger trout snapped it instantly <laughs> just snapped it right up so damn cool but, you know i almost walked by this spot too it was kind of like a marginal looking spot it was kind of hard to tell if it was going to be deep enough or worthwhile i'm glad i came down here but yeah it's so cool guys and uh nice stalker tiger there um you know not as special a fish as the wild tiger you guys saw a couple episodes for sure but they're really really fun fish and that that fish had a ton of fight for his size he really did these tigers they have um i forgot i forgot the term for it but there's a, there's a certain term for it. hybrids sometimes develop um 
more strength overall than either of their parents would have had and, and, and tigers definitely have that quality they fight like bears for their size so such a cool fish to catch uh first tiger i've ever gotten on the Pequabic. let's keep it going guys okay we have a nice looking spot coming up downstream here now i think i skipped this water uh last year when i was filming that that spinner episode because the river was quite a bit lower at that time and this spot was a little too shallow really um, but with how much higher the water is here it's actually looking pretty nice this time so i'm definitely gonna hit it we're gonna start at the back of this pool work our way up All right, just kind of broadly blanketed that first section of this of this pool with some drifts take it a couple steps forward doing the same thing you know a fish is not going to race 10 feet across stream to take your nymph at least not usually so you do have to try to get within the ballpark of where that fish might be holding just slowly moving further up Again, being careful to really kind of blanket the full breadth of the stream with casts. Oh man, I'm hung up on a stick or something. Yeah. Oh, I got it back. Yes, I did. I should resharpen my hook, but I don't have a hook sharpener, so I'm not going to. But if you did have a hook sharpener, this would be a really good time to use it when you get snagged on something. Oh, we got a fish. All right. <laughs> Oh, okay, what do we have here? Come on. Yeah, all right, a brown. All right, guys, nice. So yeah, he nabbed the, uh, the Rainbow Warrior really close up to the head of that pool. And luckily me not having a sharpened hook after getting snagged, didn't uh, spoil this fish. All right, guys, we got ourselves a trifecta. But the question now is, can we get ourselves a qu quadra, quadfecta, quadrifecta? <laughs> can we land ourselves a brookie to scratch off rainbows, browns, brookies, and tiger? I mean, there's, 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 there's a chance at it, but uh, only one way to find out, and that is to keep on moving. Now, I should mention, I have a limited time today. I do have some other things I have to take care of. I'm not gonna be able to spend like another three hours in the stream here. I have maybe another hour and a half or so. So, uh, yeah, we'll see if we can make it happen in that period of time. But already, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty damn happy with, with, what, with what I've managed to make happen in less than an hour on this stream so far. Really, really cool. Ooh really quick drown there did i just lose my fly in the snag yes i did or i might have lost it in the fish's mouth regardless my rainbow warrior is gone <laughs> let's see what else i have all right hair zero is on Got one. All right. What have we got here? Oh, decent size on this guy. Not sure what it is yet. Decent size. Is it brown maybe? Oh, no, rainbow. All right, all right. Whoa, whoa. Guys, thrashing like crazy. All right, buddy. All right, somebody like the hairs here? <laughs> Jeez. He's not throwing the nymph. Oh my gosh. I landed this guy kind of quick, didn't fight him too much. And actually, what we're gonna do is just as soon as I can pop the damn nymph out, buddy, I'm trying to let you go. Yeah. You know, it's, it's so funny. I think sometimes people watch some of these videos and they're like, he's not using barbless. Because that, that hook would just come right out. Negative. It does not always work that way, guys. This is absolutely a barbless hairsier. But these, you know, these hooks don't always just pop right out. It depends on where the fish is hooked, the angle he's hooked at. All right, guys. We're going to let this guy go straight away. <laughs> he's right back in. 
Yeah, that rainbow had some uh, had some serious energy. Beautiful little fish too. Not a good roll cast. That was a terrible cast. We're gonna fish it anyway. Got one. This is why you fish the bad cast, guys. That's why you gotta fish the bad casts. You never do know. If I just tried to bring that bad cast in, all flustered, I might have unnaturally pulled my nymph away from that fish just as he was trying to take it. And he may not have hit again after that. Let's see what we've got here. This is, this is putting up quite a fight here. Let's see what we got. Come on, bud. All righty. <laughs> yeah. There we go. Well, guys, there you go. You always got to fish, even the botched casts. Because you never know when that fish is going to happen to see your offering. And, you know, it's not as if they're only going to be looking if you made a great cast. Sometimes those crappy casts are going to be the one that you wanted to leave in the water. <laughs> Which is not to say you should go out of your way to make crappy casts. It happens to me more than I would like it to happen. But you always got to fish those bad casts. <laughs> All right, guys, let's get back to it. Oh, we got some really nice looking water down here. Really nice looking water. Now, uh, if you guys recall, again, I'm retracing my steps from the episode where I use spinners. Okay, I fished right through the same water and I think it was maybe just like a hundred feet further downstream where I got into uh, an area where there was a, a lot of stockers that were stacked up. Whoa! Guys, I just figured, ah, oh, what the hell. Let me, uh, let me throw another cast out here and instantly another taker. That's where I got most of my fish. Now again, the river is, uh, is running a little different from how it was running at that time. The water run a little, a little bit higher, and I think that's kind of altered what will be the ideal water. This might be ideal water. Yep, already. Oh, damn. Boy, he threw me instantly. We have first cast into the spot. Crazy. I'm not moving a whole lot further downstream. I think right about here looks pretty good. Now if I'm correct, I think the area where I found the fish stacked up was right down there. Got him guys, got him. I don't remember exactly though. Not that that really matters, it's not gonna affect how I'm fishing right now because Again, the conditions on the river are not the same as they were at that time. But I mean, just for just for reference sake of kind of seeing, you know, where our fish this time compared to last time, you know, how has the areas where the fish are holding changed. Got one. Ooh, nice. Oh, 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 he's trying to run me downstream. Crap. Crap, crap, crap. <laughs> okay, got him. All right. He actually, he started to go downstream. Then when I muscled, muscled him a little bit, he came right over to me. Which uh, caused me to lose tension there while I was trying to take in the extra line. All right, guys. Nice little brown. Let's get him right back in the water. Oh, okay, so this is like the, 
little muddy sort of beach that I was standing on at the very end of the last episode. So I'm definitely in the spot now where I was catching those fish. And indeed, this really does look like a great spot. Um, I don't know if we're gonna find them stacked up like we did last time, but I would be very surprised if we don't find another fish or two in here. Really nice section of stream to hit. Got one. All right. Oh, nice jump. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right guys, so like I said, I am a little strapped for time and that time is starting to run out. Now, I think I'm going to end my downstream trek here at the same spot where I ended my downstream trek during that spinner episode because my goal was to kind of retrace my steps here and I've done that. And you know, what have we come up with? Well, nymphs performed pretty damn well. It was kind of interesting that the fish certainly seemed more spread out um this time around than they did in the spinner episode the spinner episode i got a whole slew of fish but most of them were in this very spot that i'm in now so i do have a little bit more time so i think what i'll maybe do here just to kind of switch it up is i'm going to throw a streamer on and i'm going to go back through some of the areas that i was nymphing on the way down here and as i walk back up towards my truck uh, we'll throw the streamer through some of these areas and see if we get a different reaction out of fish that maybe wasn't, weren't bothering with the nymph. You never really do know. Only one way to find out. And for that matter, if we know there's tigers in here, in my experience, tigers are extremely piscivorous fish. So even more so than the typical stalker, they will take every chance they can to go after something that looks like a bait fish rather than focusing on the smaller stuff. Again, not to say they don't eat the smaller stuff, but they really like to eat the bigger stuff. <laughs> uh, well, guys, I forgot to uh, start recording, but I literally just moved, I don't know, 20 feet upstream, and we got our first streamer eater. Not too bad. A little brown. Who's to say why he decided to eat the streamer and passed up the nymph, but that's uh, his prerogative. All right, so, you know, kind of, you know, as I said, I'm gonna be moving kind of quick here. We're basically just going right back up through the same water that I nymphed and just seeing if there's any aggressive takers that will uh, chase after a streamer. So we're moving fast. We're not blanketing the area like we did with the nymph. We're just seeking out those fish with a highly predatory instinct that are going to absolutely attack this streamer. Ooh! Ooh! That felt like a take. Got one! Got one! Yeah! Another brown? Alright. Alright. <laughs> Pretty fascinating, right guys? I mean, you know, every area you're gonna see me fishing for the rest of the time, all the way back to my truck, are places I've already pretty much blanketed with dozens and dozens of drifts with the nymph. And so, you know, when these fish are taken straight away like that, it kind of makes you wonder, like, maybe they just weren't into a nymph, right? Maybe they just wanted to chase something larger. Hard to say. Okay, this is the, uh, the pool where I, I hooked into a couple fish here, I wanna say. We have a couple fish, yeah. Let's see if we can find anything else. Got one. Oh man, I had my uh, my line followed up on my rod when this guy hit. It's amazing I even kept him. Oh, it's another tiger. Yeah, yeah. All right, cool. <laughs> Another tiger. Very cool. All right, guys, a second tiger to the net. Not bad. What a cool outing this has been on the Pequot. Got a little bit of water left, 
And uh, like I said, this was uh, the little pool that I got, I think two fish out of with the nymph. Now we've just nabbed that tiger out of here. It's so interesting, right? I mean, I absolutely blanketed this area with casts. I covered every square inch that I could find. That fish just didn't eat. And we come right back up through with the streamer. And you know, those, those ultra predatory tigers, they just can't resist the streamer sometimes, right? <laughs> Got one, got one. Yeah. Decent fish. Nice bow, nice bow. All right. I think this is probably the biggest bow of the outing, guys. Not bad. snagged immediately. Shallower up there than I thought it was. Okay. Alright guys, this is the first spot we did not catch a fish in. Let's see what happens. Got him. Got him. All right. So now I gotta make my way down here off this wall to land the fish. Shoot. Shoot. Uh. All right. <laughs> yes. We get a fish out of this spot after all. All right. Oh. There we go. The rainbow streamer eater here. Not bad, not bad. All right, guys, well, we get a fish out of this spot after all. You know, this is the first spot uh, we hit, first thing uh, in the outing where we didn't get a fish, right? We got a fish in, that, in the very first spot that I hit, then we came to this spot, and I was really surprised we didn't get a fish. But uh, I guess they, they liked the idea of that streamer. Either that or maybe, you know, just a couple hours has passed, maybe these fish just turned on since then. Really hard to say, but, uh, the uh, the fish in this spot don't elude us after all. <laughs> and I had, I was kind of climbed up on this little wall over here, had to make my way back down to land that fish. It's a tricky little part of the stream to navigate here. Uh, all right, guys. Well. That just about wraps it up for this outing on the Pequabic River. And boy, fun as hell, guys. I mean, we got into rainbows, we got into browns, we got into tigers. We didn't get the quadrifecta, but we got a trifecta nonetheless. We were able to throw nymphs, we were able to throw streamers, get fish on both. You know, I mean, you can't go wrong with this, guys. You can't go wrong with this. I definitely encourage you guys to get out there, enjoy some of the fish that they put in during these autumn stockings. And remember, it's not like these fish are going to suddenly vanish after November or so. Uh, they're gonna be there all throughout the winter. So, you know, get out there, enjoy these fish, have fun on the water, and I will catch you guys next time.